Good morning. Dwayne here, Dry Creek Wrangler School. Uh, we are currently in uh, Caldwell, Idaho. Uh, came up here to see uh, the grandbabies and the kids, and so we're setting out here on this tiny little deck on the second floor of the apartment. Um, but my youngest son, Will, and I are fixing to load up the truck as soon as we get done here and head on up north out of uh, north of Chalice and Salmon up there for a week. And so I wanted to make a video real quick before we took off. Um, one of the things that you face um, with people and horses, and the more people you help with horses, the more you face it, and it's kind of universal, and that's fear. <clears throat> it's natural and it's normal. Now, people have different levels of fear. People have different personalities. They have different strengths. Um, they have different ways of approaching things. But, uh, but fear, nervousness, from mild nervousness to very nervous, up to afraid, up to terrified. Okay, you can run the gamut, but it's something that has to be dealt with. And there's people who have been riding horses and working the horses and pushing through for a long time, but they're still very nervous and still very afraid. And it's something that has to be addressed eventually. And so I just kind of want to touch on that this morning and help with that. I might as well go ahead. Every time I don't introduce whatever cigar I got, I get questions and I got to type it out anyhow. So it's just my Charter Oak Connecticut Shade, my standard uh, early morning breakfast coffee cigar. Um, so there's a couple of things. Now I've had students come through the school and, uh, and they were very nervous. And uh, there's some things that we need to understand about fear uh, in order to proceed forward. Fear is, our, fear is our body's way of warning us that we're about to get hurt. It's a defense mechanism. It's natural. So first thing I want to say is uh, fear is not something to be ashamed of, to be afraid. Now, where we start having a problem is where we let that fear control us. Courage is not an absence of fear. As John Wayne said, courage is being scared to death and saddling up anyhow. All right. So there comes a point where you just have to have courage and you have to go. Fear is, fear is not abnormal. It's nothing to be ashamed of. We are afraid of what we don't understand. That, that's where fear comes from. If we don't understand it, then we don't know in what ways it can hurt us all the different ways it could hurt us, and we don't know how we can control that. Uh, and so that's fear, and that's normal. So, so one of the things that will, will help you uh, getting a hold of the fear with your horse is just knowledge. Um, if, uh, if we start out with our horses at a certain point and we're afraid, but we, 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 we have courage, we're afraid, but we have courage, and so we keep going, but we never really learn. We never really figure out the why of things. We never really figure out how we can mitigate this circumstance. Then we'll always be afraid. So one of the first things that I say is, is to learn. Ignorance is what makes us afraid, all right? And... Uh, I had, a, I had a student, I had a young lady come into the class this summer, and she was, she was nervous. She, she was very nervous. Um, she was a real good sport, and, uh, just, but, and she, was, she was soldiering on, and, but she was nervous. And so we, we did two or three things to help her. And by the time she left, she'd made great strides. First, we changed her horse. All right, let, let's not, let's not um, minimize the importance of this. Horses have an energy, just like people do. They have a certain energy level, and you have a certain energy level. And there's some energy levels that are not compatible, if I can put it like that, okay? Um, so first thing we did was I, I noticed and I realized that it was the horse was now they had brought their own horse and this horse wasn't doing anything 
and I didn't see any indication he was going to do anything, and they didn't indicate that he had a history of doing anything, but he was an athletic, energetic little rascal, and he just, you could feel, you could feel that life and that energy in there, and, uh, and this made her nervous, and uh, so first thing we did was we just took her off that horse and put her on a calmer horse, um, and, and that helped. That helped a great deal. It was, we matched her energy to the energy of the horse, okay? Second thing we did was at the barn one day and I called her over and uh, the horse, the calm horse we'd put on would just stand there. And I said, look, what I want you to do, he wasn't saddled or anything. I said, I want you to put your hand, both hands right here on his hips, okay? Right here on his hips. And I said, now shove him. She said, what? I said, shove him, just push him. So she did, she pushed him and he's like, mm -hmm. He kind of woke up from his doze and stepped around. I said, push him all the way around. Push him full 360. So she did. She sat there and shoved that horse and pushed that horse a full 360. I said, now let's go around on the other side. Now shove him back the other way. Do do what? Just just push him. Just take him and push him. Push him. Shove him around. So she did. And so I told her, I said, you know why I had you do that? And she said, why? I said, so that you know that you could. You can push your horse around. The horse might be 800 pounds, but don't forget this. You eat meat. He is meat. You're at the top of the food chain. He is not. You ride him. He does not ride you, regardless of how big he is. You're better. And, uh, and so it kind of opened up that light and that understanding. Then as we worked on her riding and everything, her fear lessened greatly. All right? So... Pat Pirelli had a saying years ago, and he may still have it, I don't know. I heard him say this years ago, and I'm not going to take credit for it. Practice does not make perfect. Only perfect practice makes perfect. So as you study and learn and figure out the right way to do things, and do things the right way, you gain more knowledge, and as you gain more knowledge, you gain more confidence. Okay? Uh, so it's learning and growing and confidence. Uh, that will help you a great deal. The, the other thing is, get a horse that matches your energy level, okay? Um, and uh, and then the last thing, and this is kind of, um, I don't know what you call it, but listen, we're afraid when we don't face reality, okay? Reality is, if you work horses long enough, you're going to get hurt. Just face it. Don't go out there every day. What can I do to make sure that I don't get hurt? Now, we want to be careful that we don't get hurt. All right? But we don't want that to be our consuming deal. Because we're going to get hurt. And the sooner that you can stand up and face the mirror and say, Hey, I'm a horseman. I'm a cowboy. I don't sit on the couch and binge watch Netflix movies every time I got off. I ride horses and that means I'm going to get hurt bring it on when I get hurt I'm going to deal with it the more we try to avoid the inevitable listen to me the more we try to avoid the inevitable the more likely the inevitable is going to be you're going to get hurt now you may get hurt by the horse stepping on your toe and you're out there in a pair of flip-flops or tennis shoes, uh, whose fault is that? You, you may come off and hit the ground. I'm here to tell you the ground's hard. And I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's this, uh, this climate warming or, or uh, I don't know what it is, but the ground is harder today than it was when I was 20 years. I, I'm not sure what the climate implications are on that, but uh, the ground is hard. And as you get older, it gets harder. I don't bounce like I used to. Um, so yeah, your knees are gonna hurt. It's gonna happen. Um, it's just, you are gonna get hurt. And if you cannot bear the thought of getting hurt, then you might wanna think about taking up something else. All right? Because you're gonna spend all your time fearful, trying to avoid the inevitable. There are two different people. There are the people who stand out in the yard and watch the storm coming and just 
revel in the power and the beauty and the awesome fearsomeness of it. And they know the wind's going to blow. They know the wind tree's probably going to blow down. They know the lightning's going to, and the rain's going to come in. And they, and it's inevitable. They're not going to stop the storm. They're not going to stop it. They're not going to outrun it. It's coming. So they just embrace it. And then, you know, as the rain comes up, they'll go inside and, and just enjoy and, and ride it out. And then there's the people that just wring their hands. They just go wring their hands and they're terrified and, and they're just, they go down to Walmart, buy all the toilet paper off the shelves and, and they just, same storm, same storm, but approaching it two different ways, all right? So look, life is full of things. Life is full of things that we, that uh, can make us afraid. But the more you understand, the more you understand and uh, the, the better you can handle what comes and then the more you have the mindset i wasn't born to be wrapped up in bubble wrap in a blanket and sit on the couch and tremble as the world goes by outside my door i want the world to tremble when i go by its door so it's a state of mind all right it's a state of mind so learn adjust what you can and uh and then just embrace the rest of it. This way, you can enjoy. All right? You can enjoy the comfort. You can enjoy the ride. But you can enjoy the thrill as well. All right? So this is Dwayne. Just encouraging you to be logical. Be reasonable. Be safe. And have fun. And we'll catch you guys next time.